Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look how to paint flesh, part one. Uh, in part one we're going to be taking a look at like your generic space marine slash human skin and how we can achieve like a grimdark style uh, with like the, the, the space marines. And in part two we're going to be taking a look at more like your chaos flesh and your more like really horrible, grimy, stinky, messed up flesh. Like you guys, you know, had a bit of a... Had a bit of a bad time at the suntan place. Uh, but for this video, like I said, we're just going to be taking a look at how we can achieve a grimdark style when painting like your generic space marines and making the flesh look a little bit more battle-worn, like they've been through it and they've got a few injuries and stuff like that. And hopefully you can take something from this video. So first up, we're going to be using a mix of these colours, 50-50 of each. So this is AK Beige Red and Vallejo game and this is heavy warm grey. It's more like a pinkish tone if I'm totally honest. There's not much grey about it. It's like a real light purple slash pink but we're going to mix these two together and then slowly start to work up uh, and we're going to add some little things on there with some washers that are really going to change the look uh, of the skin. So like I said this is a 50-50 mix of these two colours watered down uh, again with uh, just a little bit of water just so it's flowing off. I don't want it too thin that I've got to do multiple multiple coats uh, but you just want to go around all your skin areas and do this. All these little things around his helmet and that don't worry about them. We can come to them a little bit later. First thing we need to do is just get this uh, this layer down. You want to go into all your crevices and stuff like that. Again, this might take two coats because you'll see once this is dry, because we've got that black undercoat, should have really. If you want to, you can do a, if you want to speed this up slightly, do a zenithal prime highlight over the top of your black primer, which will speed up a little bit. It might not take as many coats. If you're using something like a grey undercoat, it would be uh, a lot quicker. It's just I tend to like to prime my miniatures in black and I usually do a zenithal but for some reason I didn't bother doing it on this one then when you've completed that and it's all dry and you've worked it up to a semi opaque layer don't worry like on top of it said here you can still see there's a tiny tiny little bit of black showing through that don't matter because we're going to be painting over that a little bit later and sometimes if that's sort of showing through it, it sort of gives the skin a little bit of three dimension like there's you know like some bruising or something going on underneath the skin um so what we're going to do now is give it an all over wash of a shade which is tagor rag shade this is a really nice like browny purpley color which is fantastic for like a grim dark skin that we want to achieve and just going to apply this literally all over the miniature well not all over your miniature because you're gonna you'll end up ruining it especially if you've painted your armor just on the flesh areas don't be scared to uh, get plenty of this on don't want to be too tight with it like i said we can push that around a little bit it's not too bad if you do see it feel it pooling in some of those areas just wipe off your brush <clears throat> and like they always say wick away that excess And this is just going to add a little bit of shade to your mini and your flesh. But it's also going to go into all those crevices and stuff like that. And when you've done, you'll have something that looks like that. And just give it a few minutes to dry. And then we can move on to the next stage. Now when it's dry, it'll look a little something like this. Now all we're going to do is go back to our original colour, however the colour, the warm grey, we're going to add <clears throat> just a little bit more uh, of that into our mix and we're going to start and highlight certain points on the flesh that we want, paying special attention to places, you know, like the, the tip of the nose, just areas where, you know, the light would catch and it's just going to make those features stand out a little bit more now i know faces and stuff can be quite scary to to paint when uh, when they're on their own but i found if you've not got much control with your brush 
especially the little areas like this is just dot just use like loads of little dots to to build up those areas and you'll find that you probably get a little bit more accuracy when it comes to adding those fine details onto your miniature but places like these cheekbones and edges and stuff which are really going to stand out. Now I am going to give you on the next one that we paint uh, another technique which don't involve this like dotting technique uh, which it's a little bit faster and it does get all those raised areas however you don't have as much control as uh, doing something like this you know specifically placing highlights in certain areas <clears throat> now depending on which way the lights come in you might want to keep this side of the face in shadow but for the purposes of this we're just going to highlight everything as uh, as it should be also these little lines on the head just make sure you dot a couple of them in leaving some of that shadow stuff increases and you can see I'm using this is not necessarily a, a <clears throat> like a small brush I think this is like a zero 0.4 but it's just got a nice tip on it um, because it's got a nice tip on it I'm able to use that dotting technique but when you get to areas like top of head here you can space those dots out a little bit more and it'll almost give the skin like a, a pitting sort of look like a pitted look like he's you know it's got a bit of something manky going on on, on, on top of his head Especially if you look like, uh, if you look at like pictures like big meat heads, as we call them here in UK, meat heads, like people were on bodybuilders like steroids and stuff and see how their heads go sometimes, it's quite funny. Looks like Nurgle's plagues took over. Now <clears throat> we're going to use this again as like a final highlight, but I'm going to mix a little bit of this AK luminous flesh in. It's not a luminous colour, it's just how the name is. It's just like a really pale colour because I just want to add... A little bit more brightness uh, and tonal variation to this one. It's almost going to give it that bleached look. We uh, with this colour, we're going to get more like a, a bleached tone towards it. <clears throat> but now for this, we're just going to make those highlights a little bit tighter, uh, and again, paying more attention to those areas that really would be catching the light so especially with this like T area imagine that being like a letter T eyebrows and nose I always put a little bit more onto those areas makes everything look a little bit more defined and again depending on how prominent you want to pop a little bit on your cheekbones or well, not your cheekbones your, your miniature cheekbones and then as we get towards the top of the head, <clears throat> we're just going to dot some areas here and there. So there's like a light source coming down and hitting it. Like I said, we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller with uh, each highlight that we, that we do. Now we're going to get our Berserker Bloodshade, which is another... Citadel shade and we're going to apply this to areas I'm going to put a little bit under his eye under his eyes now I'm not a big fan unless I'm painting something that's you know, really spectacular uh, of painting eyeballs in a miniature sometimes I think if you can't do it right it can make them look a little bit cartoony um, but what I tend to do is get a little bit of this Berserker Blood shade and just pop a little bit under eyes as though his eyes are a little bit saw from all that fighting and stuff or well, what you can do this with is more like a, a darker color but for me i know it's a strange color to put round eyes but it just adds to that grim dark look now little areas like up here like he's got this little bolt or something in his head i add just a little bit around there as though it's affected the skin a little bit and caused a bit of rubbing and a bit of blood's made its way up to there. If your miniature does have scars on its face, like some miniatures have uh, scars and stuff, this is a good uh, time to add some of that to those areas as well with the Berserker Bloodshade. 
Um, and again, don't worry about going over these because we can paint those little areas a little bit later. <clears throat> Sometimes if you really want a chaos one, which we'll probably get to in another video, I love doing this with purple. And I'm just going to add a little bit just round this earpiece as though it's been irritating the skin a little bit. If you do want to get fancy, you can dot in a couple of little lines as though they're veins under the skin. And I'm going to put a tiny, tiny little bit just on his bottom lip slash his mouth just to give that a little bit of colour. I'm going to mop up a little bit of that because don't want him looking like he's drinking blood but it just adds a slight tint and a tone to that bottom lip and there we go that's just a really quick easy recipe for that one so i'm going to show you another one which is a bit more of a, a normal flesh tone like the normal skin color that uh, you'd, you'd come to expect so for this one we've just base coated it with kislev flesh and again we've just done it like the first one just gone all over um, and, and paint it out to a semi opaque and like I said if it's got little bits that are left don't worry about it <clears throat> but rather than use the Tagore rag shade for this one we're just going to use the old trusty Reichland flesh shade and again like we did before we're just going to apply that to the entire surface where you want your skin this just gives it because we've gone for like a warmer skin tone with this one this is just going to really warm it up whereas the other one were a bit more even though it had a slightly warm tint to it it's not going to be as warm as what this one is going to be so once that has dried um, I did say I would teach you a little bit of a quicker easier way it don't have as much control um, to paint the highlights using flayed one flesh rather than using the 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 dotting technique um, for this we're actually gonna I've got a flat brush but any sort of dry brush uh, will do so yeah dry brushing that flesh and um, if you're not like I said as accurate as what you think uh, you want to do this in one direction one direction what a band not um, is just start to Head lightly head down just dry brushing all them flesh areas like I said don't be scared of it going on hair or any other areas you want to make sure you're painting this section first and what that does it sort of catches all those raised areas for you but you can see it has got like a bit of a strange <laughs> dusty uh, look towards it but we're gonna we're gonna sort that out in just a minute once you've painted the rest of it it'll it'll uh, get rid of all that stuff um now again we're just going to be working with washers um for, for this bit so i mean the secret to painting flesh uh, in 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 my eyes uh, i'm going to use actually a little bit of agrax earth shade uh, around the eyes to show you a different look that it can give you but really I should have probably this this video would have probably been like 10 times shorter I could have probably done it in a short uh, if I were going to explain skin to you it is just experimenting and it is just playing around so the top tip I can give you if you're wanting to mess about if you've got loads of little spare space marine heads like this is grab a few out <clears throat> and start experimenting with them but the tip to it is is you first want to work with uh, your, your mid-tone colour so once you've got your mid-tone colour on that's where you can start experimenting and you, you can either work down or up um, which is the, the beauty of it and you can just use just experiment with different colour washers and different tones like you might put a different mid-tone on there and just work backwards and forwards till you get your you know your, your, your desired look and that's really for me the secret to, to painting skin tone so I, I i do use a different way nearly every single time yeah i've got my favorite 
paints that I like to uh, do it. Um, <clears throat> but that, that's really the, the, the secret to, to painting skin is if I could give you one tip is get a few heads like this. Get them <clears throat> base coated um, in like a, in all different types of mid-tones. And just experiment with washers uh, and getting colours like... I'll, I'll give you an example now. So I'm going to use a bit more of like a pinkish tone which is brown rose and I'm just going to paint a little bit of that into cheeks because like I said you can you can go up or down with it but obviously for the tutorial of this video it's all the little hints and tips I can give with the dotting and stuff and and how to get that that grim dark look and at the end of this video I will show you some more uh, ones that I've done but I'm just going to paint a little bit of this into those lower cheeks going up onto cheekbones just to make those cheeks look a little bit more rosy. Might put a little bit up on the head. And you can even use contrast paints um, to be able to do this as well, like your like your Gulliman's flesh and stuff like that. It's just experimenting, but I always say start with your mid tone and you can work backwards or forwards uh, from there. Now what I'm going to do with this one, a little tip that I'm going to give you, is how to add like a stubble, like a little bit of a, a beard. Now again we are going to use that dotting technique, I'm just going to use black and we're going to really water it down. You don't want to water it down so much that when you put it on it's like a wash. And you want to use black and mix in when you want to, so I had some add some highlights if he's got like a bit of a grey stubble going on and just where your beard would be we're just gonna you can glaze it on but i like to dot it on and it gives that like what like that f just you know your three day stubble as they call it so your stubble is just coming back and again you can build this up and build this up into darker and darker areas. you can even if you do it properly get um Give him like a little short faded beard, like he's been to, to barbers. But work the reason we water it down is because we don't want it too dark to, to start with. But it's just a case of very, very, very fine little dots, like miniature. This <laughs> this guy looks so weird because I've not painted his teeth, and he looks like um, he's missing missing some teeth. Like you know, he's got his, his dentures have fell out during battle. But yeah, I don't really, like I said earlier, I don't really paint the the eyes in when I'm just doing like these. It's a bit time you've added your washing it from a distance at a table when they're on the tabletop. You can't really tell anyway. And um, finally, again, I'm just going to use that Berserker Blood Shade <clears throat> just on some of those areas where it would naturally. Be a little bit sore. But yeah, this guy looks weird with no teeth. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much the um, the tip in it. Here are some I've prepared earlier, using more like uh, God, this, this guy actually. Now I'm looking at it, it looks like the uh, is it God of War PlayStation game, um, and I've just used more like a, a whitey grey uh, on this one, and then again this guy. Is the same again, but this one's got uh, a few more scars. I've painted eyes on that. I think I might have painted eyes on that one. But you can see he's got his uh, six o'clock stubble going on. Um, but yeah, it's just using the same techniques as what I've taught in this video, but it's just literally experimenting with colours. Because I know I get a lot of comments of uh, people saying things like, you know, what. Um, what, what, what skin tone stuff do you do and what stuff do you use it's just, it's just basically just experimenting get a load of your head I'm sure you'll, a lot will have heads left over for your miniatures and just get experimenting with them and you'll find one that works for you or whichever one you want but yeah I quite like this one it looks a cross between Gods of War slash one of the engineers from the Prometheus um, slash some sort of Weird vampire, that guy for Star Wars, in fact, the Grand Inquisitor, I've just realised. Um, <clears throat> anyway, 
that's been that. I hope you've enjoyed the video, you've got something from it. Uh, again, I probably could have condensed it down into a short, but there's some techniques we needed to talk about. But I just want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to uh, everyone who's recently subscribed. This channel has... Whew, it's blew up. Um, I am getting a little bit more uh, better with my descriptions. I know people want to know the paint stuff I use in descriptions. Some of them will be affiliate links, so if you can use them, guys, it would really, really help me out. If you're purchasing anything, you can go through the affiliate links and stuff. But if you're not already, thanks for coming along. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, uh, and we'll catch you in my next video.